Hello, 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 hello everyone. Here we are today at My Suara FM Hot Talk. Every Tuesday, 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. with me, Ridwan Rosli. And today we'll be talking about something interesting. Something which, uh, it is going viral. A lot of people are talking about it. And we, for that topic, we have very special guests. And our topic today is, are we all doctors? And today with us, to talk about doctors, to talk about medical, we have Dr. Rizal. Dr. Hi. Rizal, how are you? Good, good, good. Thank you, Ridwan, for inviting me today. Thank you very much for being here, Dr. Rizal. We, are, we all know doctors, they are all very busy people, especially you, making Malaysian beautiful again. <laughs> thank and, you, thank you. And then, and then we also have with us today is Dr. Nick Ghazi uh, from the emergency department of uh, Hospital Sungai Bulu. How are you, Doc? Fine. Uh, and uh, it's still fine. Uh, still fine. Still fine. Yeah, I, I, I was told that you was you were doing your what post call and you haven't slept since last night. Wow. Yeah. So it's, it's it's pretty normal, I heard. Yes, it's a uh, mm, danger. <laughs> 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 All right. Anyway, so um, today, ladies and gentlemen. We have all these issues. We have a lot of people saying this and that. First of all, I mean, the one thing that we would like to touch is, I mean, regarding topics, are we all doctors? Because why? Because these days, there are a lot of people, when they read, what about, uh, they read about medicine, maybe for two or three hours, or maybe they see an issue on the internet, they Google it up, they get to know some of the jargon of the medicine world, and suddenly they feel like they're already a doctor. Uh, they, they, they just graduate as a doctor. They're already consultants. <laughs> yes, they're already consultants. Okay. Want to share your opinions on that? Who wants to go first? All right. All right. Like, what do you think about that? So, what I think about it is uh, everything you can Google. Yes, even doctors also Google things. And they always Google everything when they don't know. But actually, what you read, uh, from what knowledge you already have, actually, it's all about refreshing, and also you actually mesh everything according to the symptoms, according to the uh, scenario of the patient, and then you use your experience, your job experience, your experience during your um, medical student time, and you come to a diagnosis. It's not exactly like uh, mathematics here. <laughs> yeah, so, 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 plus, plus, uh, one plus one doesn't mm. equal to two. Yes. And, for example, people come with you uh, with fever. Yeah. And they say, fever can be anything. Anything under the sun. All right. Okay. Okay. And then, uh, yes, you want to draw everything. Yes, of so, course. So, uh, uh, wait. Uh, <laughs> what do you do when you encounter those kind of people who come to the emergency and saying that they already make their own diagnosis based on what's on the internet? For example, they say, oh, I'm actually dog. You should do this to me, blah, 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 blah. Because why? Because based on what I read, oh, in America, this is actually what you do when you have this. Mm. What do you do, I mean, personally, when you encounter those kind of people? For example, you are a patient. Alright, we are not in America. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 would would you ask me to go back home and and I'll be be my own doctor or something? No, no, no. Actually, because I'm, I'm in a government setup. Alright. So we are in a government setup, so we just talk to them. We just talk to them. It's not actually what happened. We just explain a few things to them. So just technically, technically speaking, we have to show them that we are smarter than them. Technically, technically speaking. <laughs> All right, Dr. Rizal, what do you think about it? What's, what, what's, your, what's your opinion when you, when you encounter these kind of people? I bet you see a lot of these people online, even your yeah, friends, sure. or maybe you encounter it in your, in, in your own He's personal in experience. Private. <laughs> He's in private. They, they would love. <laughs> they would love. <laughs> they would love it. <laughs> they want extra, yeah? <laughs> 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 correct, correct. Yes, Dr. No. 
Well, uh, talking about uh, we are all doctors. I mean, this yeah. is like a very common scenario, lah. Yeah. Mean, um, these days, uh, I think I think it's a positive scenario actually. It's a positive scenario where, um, I mean, in this generation, most of us are aware of uh, are being more aware of what going on with their bodies. But one thing about 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 being aware is different about know what's really going on so uh, I, i take it very positively i mean um, i mean I, i would love uh, uh, if all my patient knows what going on with their body i would love if they go and read everything from if, google and everything if, if they really know what's going on if they really know what's going on <laughs> and to to answer what 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 you you asked just now one plus one is i mean it's always two i mean in in doctors doctors uh, formula but Where does the one come from? Where does the plus come from? Where All does right. the other one come from? So these are the things that maybe the public do not uh, fully understand from what, uh, of course, we went to medical school and they sent us for yeah, five yeah, to seven years. Yes, yes, yes. So, <laughs> so, so, where all so this that's why, from. I mean, sometimes right. yeah. I always uh, <laughs> think about it. I mean, uh, you have people who Google things up for like five, seven minutes. Hmm. And they thought they went to medical school, school, which actually takes you five or seven years. And you know these people, they're very confident of themselves and say, "No, this is what should be do. This is what should be done. All those things." But like I said, I mean, I take it very positively. I mean, this is what we expecting from our community. I mean, towards uh, 2050, of course. Yes. <laughs> TN, so, so TN. So if TN 50, I mean, are we all doctors? Yes, we all are doctors in TN 50. I would, I, I would love. To have a community who know about their health status, who know who are aware about about uh, what is uh, normal fever. I mean, who are aware? If they are aware about this, we don't. We will not have problem conge- congestion problem in our hospitals. If uh, if they are aware about how does the uh, public uh, medical service works, how does the structure? Wh- what is the structure is? They won't go uh, at 3 a.m. in the morning for a normal fever. I mean, if one, if hundreds of them going for the same problem, this is what cause congestion in Sungai Buloh emergency because they don't understand what uh, going on in the first place because they don't understand uh, is the normal fever is the uh, what uh, something gonna uh, uh, something that needs them to go to the trauma 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 department in in, in the hospital or not or they can wait until the morning. So like I said. I expect our community to 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 learn more about the diseases. I expect them to know more, but uh, they need to always um, consult with with the medical practitioner to know more about what's going on. That's All it. right, thank you very much, Doc. So, Doctor Gazi, talking about you know um, emergency traumas and and all. What you say about it? I mean, it's like based on what Doc Rizal said. Do you do you want to share any experience yourself? Yes. You want me to share? Just, just like last night. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Let's last uh, night experience. Okay. Uh, last Very night fresh experience. one. Yeah, fresh last one. night experience. For example, last night, uh, we technically didn't see at all. Every night, every night, there will be always people, just waiting, just waiting, and some people will just bang the door. Even at night. Yes, even at night. When, when oh, 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 especially at night because because they think it's yeah. very emergency. <laughs> yes, because everybody, every single person in that. Uh, in the C room, things that they are all relative or their own self. Ah, uh. uh, the sickest one. Yes, yes, <laughs> the sickest one. Ah, uh, the sickest one. And then, uh, actually, if they are really sick, they are something that is called triage. All right. Okay. Yes. Okay. Triage system. <laughs> triage system. All right. Wait. I'm go- I'm going to hold you on that because why? Because yep. Uh, that would be a very very interesting topic. But as we are today, we are talking about are we all doctors? I think we're going to go for the first song. So yeah, because we are talking about medicine and all. I think we go for the first song, and the first song would be from Neo. So sick. Hello, people. So we are back in my Suara FM, hot talk every Tuesday. With me, Ridwan Rusli, and today we have Doc Rizal and also Doctor Gazi to answer all your medical needs. <laughs> all right. So just now, uh, Doctor Gazi, you were talking about the triage system. Do you mind sharing to the public how does the triage system work, and uh, especially in a government setting? Okay. Actually, the triage actually everywhere, everywhere means in every hospital we have a triage system where when. First patient come first, then we they take vital signs. All right, vital, vital signs, signs means uh blood pressure. So meaning wow. to say they do a filter first. Filter first means 
whoever who is not stable straight to the red zone which is we call it all right so 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 that one would be like the danger mm. zone danger so zone. so if you are very mm. very yeah. very very unstable and it's about life and death mm. you go to the red zone every patient in the middle name danger all right mm. okay middle name is danger all right so you go to the red zone okay if you are not that dangerous it's not that danger, but still critical you go to the yellow zone to the uh, yellow uh, zone there usually there is no problem with that two zones Usually right. the problem is in the green zone. Wait, wait. Do you do you mind sharing an example of how do you get to the red zone and how do you get to the yellow zone? For example, if I'm if I was on a skateboard and I crack my head, and 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 you can see my brain, so I go to the red zone. Is it? For sure. All right. Okay. What makes me go to the yellow zone? If if I crack my head but you can't see my brain inside, means <laughs> means you, you just fall. You just fall. We don't know that you crack your head, but you show symptom that it, it looks like he crack his head. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So you the send yellow zone. <laughs> okay, so, so you send me <laughs> the yellow zone. And you see stable. All right. And so if you see my brain coming out, then uh, you, I'll go to the red zone. Uh, All right. Okay. Or so, perhaps the mortuary. <laughs> I will agree. I will agree. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So okay. Uh, uh, what about the green zone where you say yeah. there's a lot of things going on at the green zone actually? Because most of the people, most of the people, they come, then they will, the the stable, the with it's not critical, they will be assigned to the green zone, and in the green zone itself. For example, be. that I'm I'm sick, I have a dengue fever, so I I I assume I'll go to the uh, green zone if I have a dengue fever, uh, or, or a normal fever. If you assume you have a dengue fever, like like uh, what Doctor Gazi said, I mean, once you arrive at the hospital, they will of course take uh, filter you, take all you the vital signs. Right. If you are stable and you assume you have dengue fever, and of course we will assume you have the 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 bad the baddest thing in your body, but if you're stable, we send you to the green zone first. We give priority for this patient who who are endangered who who so it means broke that their brain and everything so, <laughs> <all right, laughs> first then then we, we are right, if, if i if i'm just showing or i'm act, acting like i'm unstable we, so, we uh, yeah the vital sign won't 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 lie, lie. Oh, won't lie all right okay so so i thought if if i if i'm acting up like i'm unstable then i, I get to go to the uh, to the yellow zone or something or, no, or no, i no. go to to the secretary so yeah. <laughs> maybe later. <laughs> all right. Okay. All right. Okay. Maybe later. All right. So, w- what is the issue? So, what what are the problem that normally you face in the green zone? Too many patients. All right. Too many patients. Who is not the patient? Who is actually not not a patient? All right. Okay. Do you, do yeah, you no, mind no, explaining? No. And well, I mean, the patient is actually a patient. All right. The patient will come with, uh, will come to us with problems, with problems, and they are hoping that we can solve the. And like I said just now, everybody will think that their problem is the the worst one. Or or, or, or or they have the biggest problem in the world. For example, you have headache for like one month already. And you have to wait until one month at four o'clock. Alright. And only you come. <laughs> and uh, why after one month and why 4 a.m. in in yes, the morning? Exactly. Alright, yeah. okay. And that's where that's where how we have been at the hand, back pain, something that very vague, Ab- All right. uh, abdominal pain, diarrhea, something that very vague and just happened a few times. That's all how it came to a term, they, so they call it MCC curse. All right, yeah, okay, oh, MCC curse. I, 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 I think that's a very interesting uh, topic. But, no, but before please, before we go to yeah. MCC curse, All right, okay, I think okay. I, I would like to address um, this from one perspective. Lah. All right. I mean, now uh, people are blaming the government, serv- uh, the government medical service as um, something lambat, nah? something right. very late. People have to queue for many hours before they can see doctors and everything. But I think um, one of the major issues that people don't really understand is uh, is the structure of the system itself. All okay, right. so like I said uh, before, uh, in our hospital setting, we have emergency and trauma department. All right. Okay, so I mean the name itself sounds emergency and trauma. Right. So something emergency, something uh, or you get involved in any traumatic uh, accidents, you can go straight away to this department. But the first um, line in medical service is actually is actually not not the emergency department. All right. So if you have anything uh, that not related to emergency cases or traumatic cases, okay, uh, tra- emergency cases is like of course like heart attack and everything. So anything that not emergency and traumatic, the first line should be our clinic kesihatan. Clinic kesihatan. Mm-hmm. All right. 
cleaning oh, CSS. Oh, so okay, many, okay, many so of us don't. Okay, okay, that, that is something new for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even, I, even I, I, I don't know that. Oh, you can go to cosmetic clinic. Yeah, even, even oh, you. Yeah, yes, you can, oh, we can, oh, we can all go to cosmetic clinic. So now uh, the the rakyat should know that our clinic kesihatan is the first line medical service that we have all in right. this country. Okay, so that, that, that is very, very interesting fact. If you, if you have those problems and if you go to medic, uh, clinic kesihatan, we won't have, we won't face any problem that we need to wait for three to four hours in the in the green zone of emergency departments because we all understand where to go first. So this is a very important um, a, a section that we need to understand. The with. people, the public should know this. Yeah, that if, they should go to clinic Kesihatan. Exactly, exactly. Clinic kesihatan if they did, if they don't have any emergency but, 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 problem. But wait, can mm. clinic kesihatan give them MC? Yeah. Aha. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So for the MC seekers, <laughs> you might think of something else. Maybe you can go to <laughs> clinic kesihatan after this. So you don't need. Um, I mean to make sure that you don't need to make our Sungai Hospital, Sungai mm. Bulu, HKL, what two pack? Because why? Because yeah, you can get. MC in clinic kesihatan also. Yeah, all right. And and, and uh, okay. So uh, okay. So Mister. So sorry, Doctor Gazi. Mind sharing your experience when it comes to MC seekers. I mean, what are those interesting cases of people asking for MC or ridiculous MC? Maybe they would like MC for a year or something. Yeah, I mean, actually, they just want like one day, two days. For example, there is a uh, long weekend. Ah. Uh, maybe uh, there is some holiday between uh, Wednesday and Thursday, and then Friday working, and then weekend. <laughs> so right. they will come in early morning, Friday, or maybe uh, one day before that. Okay. All right. Fake so symptoms. Uh, I'm, 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 I mean, it's like the longest that uh, anybody have ever asked you. How long was it? For an MC. Mm, Five, six so days. Far. Yeah. So far, one week. One week. So that's yeah, because. That's that's pretty long and because that just shows so that just shows that actually I think in one way to look at it is because they don't want to work. But you guys need to work. <laughs> and, and, and and normally you guys work up to what, thirty six hours? Yeah, up to thirty six hours usually. If up, you're on calls. If you're on calls, so up to thirty six so meaning to say thirty six hours if everything if everything is if you're so packed, thirty six hours of none stop working of non sleeping. Um, yeah, well, sometimes we do rest, we do sleep, but our our brain will not stop uh, working. You, know, you, you uh, if you got what I mean, uh, if we are resting, sleeping for one half an hour, one hour. Once we got the phone call, uh, from the ward, say doctor, ada pesakit like uh, kati tiga bir. We we cannot like like um my for five minutes, then only you can respond to the emergency call. So your brain is technically working even you're sleeping. So that's what I mean. <laughs> all right, so I would like to dedicate a song for all your hard work, and that's that's. So now let's go to the next song, and I think it really, really suits your experience working thirty six hours or even more, saving life, people. Next song, Rihanna. Work, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we are back with my Suara. Hot talk today in the studio. We have Doc Rizal and also Doc Gazi. We are talking about medicine in in general because the topic is are we all doctors? There's a lot of perception. There's a lot of misconception among the public when it comes to our healthcare issues and also health issues. So the next thing, the next thing that I would like comments and also sharing from you guys is you know that these people these days uh what we call as things online with all marketing mm. all sort of things you mm. know marketing online marketing and all mm. you have technically you have people that jual ubat tepi jalan but now they are online exactly. and 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 they are making it like so real this is proven by this, that, and what. But it seems sometimes the products that they sell can actually cure every single mm. disease on earth or to some extent, you know, cure cancer. Or, exactly. or I'm not sure, maybe give you cancer. What do you guys say about that? Well, I think it's a legit concern uh, about, about this. I mean, sometimes they are not only online, they are on t- the television, they are on air as well. I mean, most of the products, like I said, uh, boleh menyembuhkan sakit buah pinggang, sakit hati, sakit berut, sakit like everything, every single organ in your body. And and the best part is, they will say, and this product is approved by Kementerian Kesihatan Malaysia to actually fool their 
their oh, uh, so, so potential actually, bias. Even, even when they say that, sometimes it's just <clears throat> fooling people then. Yes, but because, uh, uh, I mean, the reason why they say that because is uh, they, they want their other end, the, the potential buyers, to think that these products can actually heal uh, and proven by Kementerian Kesehatan Malaysia. But what Kementerian Kesehatan Malaysia is uh, did is simply to to check if there's any, I mean, akta racun, eh, under ah, akta racun, right. is it, there it, any it, poisonous uh, stuff in, in, in that in that product or not? Is that is that's it. it. So right. they are simply uh, fooling the people, fooling or, the other or, end. Or, or, or abusing. Abusing or, the things. And, uh, and I think it's a legit concern, uh, what you said. So um, we need to educate our people more so that they know what's going on. What do you say about that, Dr. Ghazi? This might be a little bit harsh, but I've got to say this. Whatever medication they are selling and all, we cannot cure stupidity. Okay, okay, you cannot cure stupidity. All right, no, okay. If you don't know, <laughs> you ask yourself who actually knows. <laughs> no, we have all so right, many okay, people who actually know. All right, okay, so that's, that's a very interesting one, ladies and gentlemen. No matter what you eat, no matter how healthy your lifestyle is, you can't cure stupidity. So that's the ty- tagline for today. Are we all doctors? We can't cure stupidity. That's a very good one. <laughs> all right. Okay. Yes. Dr. <laughs> I know. Uh, uh, because um, what, what, what about people eating all this ubat kuat and all which is not being approved and, and, and they send complaints saying that, oh, I ate it and it doesn't work. <laughs> I don't so, know what to say. So, I don't know what so, to say. Right? So, so it's in there. All these people are speechless. So do you want to share your own, your own experience, Doc? Uh, are you go- going to share your own experience or not? No. <laughs> are you going like, to share your own I, experience? I will give uh, uh, one minute, a moment of silence. <laughs> and then I will touch the patient. I'm sorry for you, bro. <laughs> I feel sorry for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. Yeah. But, <laughs> hey, but we do have uh, problems. I mean. It's not just kubat kuat. You know, I have a patient, a very young one, um, uh, who did some injections uh, to his um, um, what you call it, penis, right? All to right. his penis uh, to what enhance injection? the size. So it's got to enhance enhance the size. And this injection he's buy from from online online thing. <laughs> so after a few years, uh, problem it, occurs. Uh, he it really grew big. He grew big, but he grew ugly. He said, <laughs> <laughs> all right, "Okay, all I, right. I didn't manage to see this patient personally, but uh, he said it uh, grew all ugly until he had to remove it, remove it from surgery. From from from, from surgery. So, don't simply um, trust products outside products. So, if you have any problems." please come to we doctors. We're going to consult you the best thing. I mean, um, government hospitals, uh, government doctor, government uh, medical practitioners, they will always consult you for what's best. So they will not consult you to get money from you. They will not consult you to get surgery or to send you to another department or what. So, um, I mean, from my experience working in the government sector for, for quite quite some years, um, I, I even worked in emergency department as well as time. So, um, I mean, we we always consult for what's best for you. If they if doctors ask you to go back, uh, it's not that um, they want you to go back simply. <laughs> huh? But sometimes uh, do um, um, forgive us because sometimes uh, some doctors when they work in long hours they face ridiculous patients. Um, they do. I mean, we are humans. We do get upset. Also yeah, human All factors. Right. right, that's a humans human factors in doctors that we could get upset and sometimes they 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 didn't. didn't talk nicely or offended you or whatever I mean, it, it does happen it does happen it just uh, um, um, it just uh, happened to once once another alright alright okay so Doc, as with, uh, again I mean it's like yes or all this all this thing can't cure stupidity but <laughs> <laughs> moving <laughs> but moving forward and you have to repeat it over and over again yeah, yeah I, I mean but I mean w- w- what what's, what's your uh, I mean what's your opinion or what do you think I mean moving forward that these people yes we can't we can't cure the stupidity and they might lose their private part because of their stupidity or so called stupidity or, or, or their mistakes yeah. their, their mistake that, that might, they might lose um, I mean private parts or some other parts of the body but hopefully they survive it so how do you say what do you think about it moving forward I mean these people I think the, the key point is actually education means it's really important to educate our people of uh, 
when to come, when not to come, when to seek treatment early, when to wait, when not when to, to eat to ubat kuat and all those stuff. <laughs> I know. No, it, it, it's actually actually uh, not just in our country. Actually, in other countries as well, they are using this thing. Actually, they are, they don't want to come forward, or, or, or maybe it's just too expensive to come forward. So they they just go for something cheaper. And cheaper alternative. Cheaper alternative with uh. Um, which you might lose some very vital part yeah. of your body. But <laughs> people like to get a like uh, uh present, uh present punya apa enjoyment. All right. Yeah. Um, so pleasure. Pleasure, you know. Pre- uh, present uh, present enjoyment, and you might lose a lot. <laughs> Things so for education. Uh, you have to educate. So hmm. it's all about education. So, ladies and gentlemen, I think now it's time for us to go to the next song requested by Doc Rizal. Uh, hello, hello, hello. We are back in hot talk. Are we all doctors? To uh, today, twenty third of May, Tuesday. With me today is Dr. Ghazi and also, also Dr. Rizal. And also we have our beautiful producers with us in the studio today, which is DJ Ira and also DJ Arin. Thank you very much for being with us. We I, always I, I did a brief my MC book. Ah, uh, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, too. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> too bad, lady. The doctor didn't did bring MC her, her MC book. Did okay. Book okay. <laughs> Next issue. There's, there's people in Malaysia who's asking, who's demanding on they want women. Not all, but some people, they want women to be in the process of delivering their babies or delivering their babies. What do you guys, what's your take on that? Maybe Dr. Ghazi, you want to start first? Actually, in this matter... Um, what's, what's the reality is like, Doc? The reality is, whoever is there, which has skills, should conduct delivery. No matter, uh, man, woman, wh- whoever, they actually everybody is busy. Or both, or both. <laughs> or both. No, no, no. <laughs> what I'm saying is, they're all concerned about the private parts. They're all concerned about private parts. Let me give you a simple example. You are worried about the uh, your. I mean, the, the wife. And uh, all the male doctors see the private parts and all. Let me give you uh, one example. In, uh, for example, in urology, the nurse always look at some other uh, males private, private part. part. All right, people don't have problem with that. All right. Yeah. So, so, so if this is all about medicine. This, this is about healthcare. And right? then the reality is, if you ever been in a lab- labor room, then you will understand. They actually, they call it labor because it's really painful. And have you ever ever seen a people who is really in painful? All right. Okay. Really painful. Oh, all right. All right. Then, in a really painful situation. <laughs> and, in they pain. just, and they just, they, you just, there's no time for you to think about those kind of things. All right. So, so uh, yeah, uh, to, to be dirty minded uh-huh. and everything. Dr. Rizal, what do you say about that? Well, of course, um, patient needs is always our priority. Okay, whatever they want is uh, we will always try to accommodate. All right. So, but in Malaysian setup, uh, in Malaysian setup, uh, I mean, what I mean, this is a real issue. I mean, um, as a Muslim, they always we always ask for for a female doctor to conduct delivery and so on. And and our government also having make have making step towards this this kind of things. I think a few months back we already announced that we're gonna gonna have our Patu Sharia hospital. Uh, not to say that currently our hospital tak Patu Sharia, but Sharia compliance. Uh, shari- uh, um, right. But uh, not to say that we are not Sharia compliance. But uh, the thing is, we have to understand the whole situation in Malaysia. Okay, um, in Malaysia, most of our hospital are teaching hospital. Uh, why we have this teaching hospital? Because we need to teach more doctors to be more competent so that they can work in rural areas to conduct problems. So when we at the teaching hospital, of course, we need to teach all these young doctors so that uh, once they are graduated, when they are, they, they are fully um, competent, we can send them to Sarawak, to Sabah, to uh, some pedalaman in Pahang to conduct uh, whatever needs the people needs there. 
if we don't train our male doctor to conduct delivery, for example, in Hospital Ampang, once this doctor being graduated and been sent to some pedalaman in Sabah, if there's delivery there, who going con- who going to conduct? All right. So we need to understand our. Then we will have a case of Tarzan and Jane all over again <laughs> in be, Malaysia. Might be. Yeah. But so, we <laughs> so we don't want we don't want Malaysians to be living like Tarzan, right? <laughs> yeah. So th- those are the issues, people. Exactly. But we have, but my point here we have we have to understand the Malaysian setup. But if you have any special needs or any specific needs, you can always go to private hospital and ask for for that special needs. If you go to government hospital and expect this kind of things is absurd because we have bigger um, demands for the Malaysians. All right? But, um, I mean, to to make you less worried, uh, government have prepared for a Sharia compliance hospital in the future, I think somewhere in Selangor, uh, in five years' time. So, during that time, if you book earlier, if, <laughs> you might get the chance to actually choose um, the the gender of your doctor. Uh, what about people who wants to book you, doc? Oh, they, of course. They, 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 want, they want you to help deliver their babies. <laughs> what do you say about that? I experienced that quite a lot. So I, I, I'm happy to, 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 to serve. All right, so next time, if you want to give birth, go to cosmetic clinic. <laughs> Not results, uh. Yeah. Or you want Doc Gazi? Yeah. Yang dia tu maybe maybe tak nak keluar. Maybe tak nak keluar. Oh, oh, oh takut. Baby tak nak, baby tak nak keluar. But baby tak nak keluar. Uh-huh. <laughs> And oh, yeah. So th- those 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 are uh, what we are talking right now. Those are I mean the current issues that a lot of people brought it up. However, I think it is very very important to understand what is the reality of the situation. Of course, all of us we have our own needs and we have our own practice. Friends, but when it comes to reality, as we all know, it is not as smooth sailing as I mean, as as you mentioned. Of course, I mean everyone wants a woman's doctor, mm-hmm. but at the same time, um, the number of female also male doctors. I think it happens all uh, around the world, and yeah. then sometimes maybe we are like worried sick, mm-hmm. just just because of you know, those kind of issues. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so I mean, I mean besides besides that, I mean what else? That both of you think that you should be sharing a lot of misconception, uh, misconception, other type of misconception that you always see or usually see online or among your friends when it comes to health issues. Well, I will um, uh, stick to to what I said earlier. I mean, the stigma that our people have towards our government medical setup is we are always. Uh, Uh, what I call it late uh, and inefficient and and stuff. But I mean, this can be solved by understanding how the the medical structure first in the first place. All right. So like I said, if you are sick, um, that is not emergency. You go to uh, clinic kesehatan and we'll address you there. And we won't have any problem that we have too many patients in our emergency department in the hospital. So if we can understand these kind of things, I believe. We will have a better medical service, a better government medical service in Malaysia. So it's very important for us to 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 stick to that. And number two, um, I would love to have in the future a more um, medical aware um, community people in in Malaysia. So uh, I mean, there's no problem for 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 me as a doctor if my patient want to read more about their diseases. I mean, I would. I would love them to read more about their diseases. So, but the thing is, they need to come to doctors and don't go against what their doctor consult, consult whatever the doctor consult. We we can always. Uh, it's it's easier to have uh, two ways communication if if the other side uh, knows what's going on. But don't go and against what whatever your doctors um, trying to consult you. So, um, I I think these two things are very important. If we have these two things, um, mindset in our Malaysian mindset. I mean, in the future, we will have a better. Medical system, Doc Gazi. What do you say? Yeah, I agree with that. They should read more, and when they on kata pelajar sampai habis, maybe <laughs> if you don't know, you just ask somebody who who knows better. All right. So I mean, I, I mean, it's like before before we go to the next song. Just one quick question: What about those people who believes in their so-called? Uh, bomo, kawan-kawan, pawang-pawang, 
and all all the people uh, all all the people that um you know that go to them and say oh actually you tak sakit ni buatan orang ni sebenarnya but actually that person have a brain tumor what do you guys say about those kind of people well this is also a valid uh, concern in malaysia so well. um yes i i mean from my experience working two years in emergency department last time um we we have many many ma, 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 many of ma, many of our patients like this they they won't come to us in the first place uh because they want to treat this as a as a what you call it as a um, this bomo bomo thing they go to bomo in the first uh, in the first first then after that only they come back to us oh, I, I, i had bedah batin before doc so it's okay so meaning, exactly. you, know, you have those kind of people who say that oh i i don't need to go for surgery because But, i did it I did it in in some other dimension before. When when I was in the surgery department last time, uh, when, when we diagnose patient uh, cancer, breast cancer and, and stuff, and advise them for chemo and everything, they neglect our consultation. They don't want to take our advice. They go back and they went to their bomo, and their bomo did all that um, button surgery and stuff. But after few months, they come back stage four already. Alright, so I mean we do face a lot of this uh, uh, in Malaysia. Uh, we have statistics that can clearly show that these problems are actually occurs more among the Malays because uh, uh, if you see the Malaysian statistic, um, the, the uh, Chinese have the highest um, uh, numbers in in having cancer actually in Malaysia. Uh, uh, Indian and, and Malay are mostly having diabetes and hypertension problem. But the situation why Chinese have higher number of uh, having cancer is because they do go and check and and we actually find out oh chinese you have a cancer and m- many chinese do go and check when they have problem but for malays and and indians mostly malays and indian when they have problem they will stay at home takut nak pergi check sebab takut takut ada penyakit so this is uh, one of the scenarios uh, that's really going on in the in, in the country and we need to like really treat and uh, educate educate them so ladies and gentlemen so next time If you don't want to be doctor, there's always a chance you can be a bomo. Because why? Because you might have patients too. Some people are very interested in all this bomo or what. You can think that of a career. But of course, be careful. Yes, Dr. Gazi, before we go to the next song, just a quick one. Okay. For Yes, uh, all this thing can't cure stupidity, <laughs> obviously. Yes, still. <laughs> still. But still, there will be there. And for the bomo things, bomo is like... I actually, I, 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 they earn my respect actually, because people they don't need to give evidence to actually to convince these people. Actually, they really don't need evidence and everything that they say and every failure of the treatment they go to the next step. They go to the next step. <laughs> just, 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 you know, in uh, so, so this is all about trust issues. Yeah. Trust yes. issues. I mean, it's like some people doesn't believe in real medicine. They believe in those kind of medicine. Yes. Trust issues, sir. but when it comes to the, uh, uh, you go to the, I mean the, our government hospital and all. When it doesn't work, then no, it will not work. <laughs> all right, people. So if it doesn't work, it, it 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 please, it will never work. And first thing first, go to the right people. Go to the right doctor. Mm-hmm. I think this is our last song for the slot. Uh. Asked by Dr. Ghazi, and this is yeah dedicated to him then. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are back in hot talk. You're right. My Swara. Emergency. Are we all emergency. doctors Neuro- today? Emergency. With us, we Neuro- have Neuro- Dr. Ghazi and also Dr. Rizal, who have been uh, for the past nearly one hour sharing with us what are the misconception, what are the reality, uh, what the things, the do's and the don'ts. So we are coming to the um, last part of the session today. Are we all doctors? And yeah, we got some we got some uh, requests over here from our Facebook live. Uh, one of the question we got one question from Azfa Arif. Uh, Doc Rizal, tolong flawlesskan muka aku. <laughs> so so maybe that one you can use a camera 360 or or in medical term. <laughs> <laughs> What else can be done, though? Uh, I I know this guy as for uh, I mean, same like your case is gonna cost him a lot as well. <laughs> yeah, alright, alright. So, so as for Arif, that one gonna cost you a lot of money. So 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 to make your face flawless and 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 stuff. Insurance tak cover. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Insurance insurance tak cover. And uh, yeah, talking about insurance and everything, just 
government hospital how much do you need to pay uh, how much do we need to pay the rakyat need to pay if you want to go our religion have to be one ringgit just one ringgit one ringgit if, if, if i want to give birth in a government hospital how much would it cost i'm not really sure but just less than 100 less than 100 Less than twenty ringgit, less than one hundred ringgit. Is is depend is it depend on the what? Uh, uh, d- depend depend on uh, depend on the cases. So, but basically, for every medical, I mean, if you want to go in into clinic kesihatan or what, it's just going to cost you one ringgit. Exactly. As a Malaysian, hmm. what about non Malaysian? Uh, hundred ringgit. Hundred ringgit for non Malaysian. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's actually just going to cost you one ringgit to get or to meet these doctors. But again, it's based on priority. We you have, in a <laughs> we, 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 we have a tri- we have a, a triage system. Uh, put we need to know is it an emergency? Is it a real emergency or it is not a real emergency? With the cost of just one ringgit. Do you have any any cases where people complains that it costs one ringgit? Uh, people don't because it it actually uh comfort them. We actually uh they think no no it is. One thing of uh of people say be bitter truth. Actually, um, they only pay one ringgit, but they don't actually quite uh we call it we they don't actually appreciate that because um maybe they never been in a private setup where it's actually what it actually cost every swap every piece of cloth will be count. Yep. Yeah, and uh, I think the rakyat. Or the people out there should um, maybe they should appreciate more. And based on last year budget, what I understand was when it comes to medical alone, our budget was more than tens of billions. Exactly. Yeah, just just for just for our budget and a not lot just last not just last year. Every year, uh, our medical budget is the second highest after education. Every other year. So that uh, means it's rough, sometimes up goes to up to twenty or thirty billion ringgit, and that's a lot of money. And some people say, uh, and and some of them still demand that we get free medicine. And uh, to be frank with you, I personally think that. Uh, one ringgit is is it is a token of commitment. It's not about charging the people. It's about a token of commitment, and is one ringgit is obviously not the price, and we don't give it free because yeah we need a token of commitment just to make sure that the rakyat feel that they actually contribute or be a part of something bigger. So coming on to the conclusion, maybe we start with Dr. Ghazi first. About today's session, is there any last word, Doc? I think the only thing that I can say is, if you don't know, just ask. That's all. And um, I would like to <coughs> thank our host. Yeah, and thank also you. our producer. <laughs> uh, you are most welcome. Yeah. <laughs> and and oh, and also at least our producer knows where he can get where she can get uh, MCs. And also, uh, uh, DJ Ira knows that uh, after this, uh, where where she can yeah. go, you know, yeah. to do Tapi something tabi. else besides jambu and all. I ingat awak ni. Okay, you ingat awak. Blacklisted dekat ID nanti. All right. So, Dr. Rizal? Well, for conclusion, I mean, back to your very topic. Huh? Are we all doctors? Of course, we are not. But we are hoping uh, by trying to become one, uh, we can, we're going to get a more healthy community. So, um, I, be, I, I mentioned what I have to mention before. Um, read more. Uh, try to be uh, more healthy, more fit. Go fit Malaysia. Um I believe by 2050. Just, just, we, just, just a short one. Just we, a short we, we, one. Uh, uh, doc, I, I want to ask you, hmm. what about all these people who really, really wants to be fit and they're eating I don't know what and sometimes maybe it give you it give them a bad effect because yeah, we are all youth. We are eating all these supplements. What, what do you say about that? Yeah, go to your doctors and consult f- whatever you, you, you've been eating. Consult first, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, before you start eating everything. <laughs> all right. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's like I, I think all of us uh, w- would be also interested. I mean, it's like Dr. Ghazi is, uh, is in Sungai Bulu at the uh, emergency and also traumatic yeah. uh, trauma department. 
go to clinic kesihatan first. Okay, okay, alright, alright. Go, go, go to clinic kesihatan first. And yeah, yeah, your brain, is, your brain is coming they, out. They want to find, they want to find. They, they want to, other people will bring you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> no, no. Just stay there. Uh, <laughs> alright. Uh, do you inv- do you want to invite more people coming to your hospital, dog? To your department? Yeah, it's quite. Hopefully, uh, hopefully they don't need to come to your department, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, quite a hard question to ask. <laughs> <laughs> to, for me to answer is. <laughs> All right. Pass, pass. All right. Okay. <laughs> Doc Rizal, tell us a bit more about your cosmetic clinic, where it is, and what do you guys offer. Before I answer that, I think there's one question from the audience. Ah, huh? boleh yeah. beri pandangan doktor tentang bagaimana nak mengatasi masalah penyakit jantung di kalangan orang muda. I mean, I would I would like to answer this. I think uh, first of all. Um, Yes, it's, it's a, it's a uh, valid concern. Uh, young people should go and have a more... I mean, should go for a checkup lah, whenever they have any symptoms, whenever it runs in the family. So basically, after 30 years old, lah, right. uh, if you have any of the heart, heart problem symptoms, you should go and check. What are the uh, symptoms? Um, of course. Of course, I mean if you have chest pain, chest pain, sudden, suddenly you have uh, what? Um, heartbroken? <laughs> heartbroken, no. Heartbroken <laughs> won't, won't be among, among the system, um, among the symptoms. <laughs> so, su- um, what you call sudden, um, um, sudden breathlessness, difficulty of breathing. Huh? Uh, those are, are, are the symptoms. But but more 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 uh, important in young people, if you if it runs in the family, if you fat, if you have um, obesity, obesity and all, you should go and check up for a checkup. Don't afraid to check your blood status. Um, I mean, these are among, among the things you need uh, for for. I mean, the early screening so that can prevent you from from having all this problem. Okay, talking about my. My, my clinic now. I mean, um, currently I I'm already resigned for the government service. I own a clinic in um, in <coughs> the curve. Actually, we have two branches. One is Bandar Utama, is one in the curve. It's uh, actually aesthetic, uh, aesthetic and laser tra- laser center. So if you have anything um, uh, related, uh, any 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 anything that we can help you with, I mean, anything related to your skin problems, anything to related to for your slimming and. Um, and to make, to make that's, your skin that's, that's looks good. So, so can I get a six pack now? Sure, sure, can. <laughs> I'll send you to the gym first. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to have to to have more info on, on this, you can follow our Instagram at uh, at Cosmetic Clinic. Okay, at Cosmetic Clinic, uh, we are having our uh, Hari Raya promo as well. Uh, starting this week, so uh-huh. please, uh, so, the, so, so DJ Ira uh-huh. is coming soon. I, I can yeah. I can imagine our producers will be there. I would love to be Hari to host Raya. you guys. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Rizal. Thank you very much, Dr. Ghazi. We had a very, very fruitful discussion today in Hot Talk as usual. And this week we were talking about are we all doctors? So ladies and gentlemen, just like Dr. Rizal said, we are not. And to again, to uh, recode what Dr. Ghazi said, there's, there's nothing that can cure stupidity. So ladies and gentlemen, let us all study more, read more. If we don't know, let's go and ask the right people. Again and again, thank you very much, Doc. And I would like to say this again on the air. What's up, Doc? I really, really love saying that because thank since you. I was small, I was watching the cartoons and all. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you for inviting. All right. Thank you very much, Doc, uh, Doc Rizal. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Ghazi. So, stay tuned again. Hot Talk. My Suara Hot Talk every Tuesday, 11 a.m. to 12 p.m., and today we went overboard a little bit because it was so hot. A lot of people were asking a lot of questions. Even our producers are asking a lot of questions. So ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned next week. Same time, uh, same day. With me, Ridwan Rosli. Hot Talk. Thank you very much.